Okay, but that doesn't answer my question. When you damage my car, who's gonna pay for it? A few years ago, uh, I was with a friend and uh, we were heading up to Bear Mountain, which is a uh, state park. Uh, I wouldn't call it upstate New York. It depends. If you're from Long Island, everything past the city is upstate. But to people who actually live upstate, that's a joke. But let's call it upstate New York. We we're going to do a cruise, about 20, 30 other BMWs. And I decided to just go with him. I wasn't going to drive my car that day. And we went in his, uh, his 335 that he had at the time. It was a beautiful Le Mans Blue on black 335, six-speed, nicely modded. And... One of the things he had done was he put a custom front bumper on the car. It was a 1M molded front bumper. He was one of the few people who had one. And it was also lowered. And so the, the front clearance of this car was incredibly impractical. I really don't know how he drove it every day, but he did. We're going over the George Washington Bridge, and all of a sudden in one of the lanes we see the base to one of those circular traffic cones, and it's just the, the weighted rubber portion. That, that holds the cone down, but no cone. And we run over it and immediately we hear scraping. We don't know what's going on, but something clearly is broken underneath the car. And now we get a coolant light on. So we pull off the exit for the Palisades Parkway and pretty much right away, we know that the car is overheating. So we get off to the side, big shoulder. We're, we're definitely in a safe spot and we assess the situation. So the first thing we do is we're thinking, all right, well, this car needs to be towed, obviously. We need to, we're not going to go on the cruise, we need to tow it back home. And that's where the, all the nonsense really starts. So we called and we find out that the George Washington Bridge is completely restricted for towing, meaning there's truly nothing you can do if you want to get towed except wait for the Port Authority and the Port Authority police to come and tow you. The problem is, they're the only game in town, so you kind of just have to do what they say and go along with it, what they want to do. Now, granted, this is an all-wheel drive BMW, so technically, it's supposed to be flatbedded. You, you can't just pull the front of it. It's, it's, it's not meant to work that way. So the Port Authority tow truck shows up, and basically what they tell us is they just want to push us about 500 feet up the road to the gas station. When you start the, the Palisades Parkway, there's a gas station, and it doesn't actually have an address. It's just kind of on the beginning of the highway, and that comes into play a little bit later on. They just want to push us technically off the exit ramp of the GW onto the highway so that we're somebody else's problem. And so the first issue with that is also the rear bumper of the car has some custom work done to it. It's got an exhaust, it has a carbon diffuser that was custom made for that car. So his natural first thought is, well, who's going to pay for the damage when you damage my car? Because they just want to push his car with their truck, which has a, a two foot thick foam pad on the front of it. And they're like, oh, we're not going to damage your car. He's like, okay, but that doesn't answer my question. When you damage my car, who's going to pay for it? He goes on arguing with them for about 15, 20 minutes, and they eventually threaten to just impound his car. How or why, we have no idea. So what winds up happening is after the 15 to 20 minutes worth of arguing we've done with these two uh, Port Authority gentlemen, we realize that the car is cooled down enough to the point where we can just drive it 500 feet up the road. And so we decide to do that and not let the car get pushed. And obviously this is agreeable to them because they don't really care and they don't want to deal with it. They just want us off the bridge so they can go back to doing whatever it is they do in between toes. We get to this gas station. I believe it's a Sunoco and it's, it's immediately as the, the highway starts. And so, all right, all right, now we need to get the real tow home. We'll get it back to the, uh, his house on Long Island, take a look, figure out what happened. So we call his uh, insurance company, I think it was Allstate, and we're trying to set up the tow now uh, because his BMW roadside has expired. And, you know, this, this woman is, she's incredibly nice, very sweet, but she can't grasp where we are. And we're just trying to explain, we're at a gas station on the Palisade Interstate Parkway North, right off the GWB. And she's like, can you give me an address? I'm like, there, there is no address. It's, it's just, it's just, this is how this highway works. When you first thing you get on both north and south closest to the bridge, there's a gas station. We actually wound up giving her latitude and longitude coordinates off of the, the GPS of the car. And she still, after looking it up, said she couldn't figure out how to dispatch a tow truck to it because 
now she has discovered for herself that there is no address. And eventually, we convinced her that just, look, anybody who tows in the tri-state area is going to know exactly what you're talking about. And we get to the point where she can't arrange the tow, nothing she could do about it. She says, if you can get the car off the next exit uh, in, uh, I think it's Anglewood Cliffs, New Jersey, we'll, we'll set up a tow for you there. So we sit in this gas station in this disabled 335, and we wait about another 30, 40 minutes until the car cools down again. And we drive it about a mile up the road, really watching that temperature gauge so we don't overheat the car. We manage to get off the exit, and we also know we're dragging something at this point. We have no idea what's dragging out the back of the car, but it's something really long. You know it's long because you can see it in the rear view mirror. It was actually the rubber from the base of the thing. It was kind of like tiered, and it was it un unwound itself sort of underneath the car. We think it got caught on something and started shredding into a perfect sort of line, like the rubber ripped. Either that, I don't know where else we caught it, like a 20 foot long piece of rubber from, so that's our best guess. So we get off the exit in Anglewood Cliffs. We get into the parking lot of this restaurant. It's closed. Uh, it's early in the morning. And uh, eventually a local police officer stops, asks us if everything's all right, which is very nice of him. Uh, we explained what had happened with the Port Authority and the Port Authority police, and he was like, oh yeah, those guys, they don't, they don't care. They just want you off the bridge. We're now waiting for the insurance company tow truck to bring us back to Long Island. And we probably sit there for half an hour, and eventually... This, this guy shows up and we go behind the car and we figure out what, what's dragging and what had happened. And basically the front undershield for the car had been pulled downwards. So it turned into a chute for rocks to just go straight up. And one of the things that it covers, what runs along the bottom frame of the car is a coolant line. It's attached right to the bottom of the vehicle. And if your, your undershield is off and happens to be pointed upwards, it's basically a chute right into it for all the rocks to hit. So we completely punctured that, and we lost all the coolant. Eventually, the tow truck gets there. Loading the car was somewhat uneventful, although there was a little bit of a, a hesitation, again, because the car is very low, and while we did damage the coolant line, we actually didn't damage this front bumper. So we get the car on without a problem, and then we realize there's only two spots in the pickup, uh, in the pickup truck in the the cab that's that's towing the car and it's him and a second guy so we're like well what are we gonna do he's like well you're gonna have to lay it down in the car and i'm like what he's like yeah you need to go in the car but you got to put the seat down really far because if they they see you sitting in there that's going to be a real big problem for me and i'm thinking to myself that's going to be a big problem for you like you want me to ride in the back of this thing and, and obviously we can't turn the car on so it's ridiculously hot the sun's beating down on us but what choice do we have we get in the front of the car, we lay the seats down completely, and we have a very interesting ride home in the car, which is on a flatbed, trying to hide from being visible anywhere, which isn't very easy on the GW with all the technology they have there, but we made it home, we jacked the car up that night, figured out what the problem is, we did a little intermediate fix with some pipe clamps, and uh, he got the part a week later and repaired the car by himself. It's also worth mentioning the other problem with towing off the Palisades is that's considered a restricted road. So if you want to talk about the uh, tri-state towing mafia, there you go. It's uh, only, only certain companies can tow you off. So we'd actually come to a point where they had said that we're going to need one company to tow you off the Palisades and then a different one can take you home. And that's when we decided to eventually just try to drive the car off the Palisades and, and make it into this next little exit in this small town in New Jersey. To this day, I still give that friend a little bit of trouble about how he still modifies his cars to an almost impractically low height, and a low static height, I should say, for, for New York roads. But uh, I guess I would just say, if you're gonna modify your car in that way and you're going to try to drive it on a daily basis around the tri-state area, I would uh, be prepared for the worst when it comes to road hazards. We are living in some strange economic times and Premier is here to help you use those circumstances to buy your dream car. 
They have a simple lease program that makes it easier than ever to buy your dream car. They do financing for vintage and exotic cars. I've used them in the past and I absolutely love Mitch and his team over there. So be sure to contact them before you go shopping to understand and get pre-approved for whatever your buying power is. That way you can go to the dealers, go to the private sellers and make a very qualified, but perhaps a little bit insulting offer.